Hey, future badass business owner, welcome back to the Start a Small Business podcast, where each episode we will be walking you through the process of getting your small business from concept to open for business. And today I want to talk about a family business and should you start a family business. All right, here's the thing. Family businesses can be wonderful and family businesses can be a big pain in the keister. And it's important that you understand this before you even get going. And when I say family business, it's not necessarily that you form the business together as a family, although that it is can happen. You can go into business with your father, with your mother. You can go into business with your brother, with your sister. It could also be where you own the business and you hire your family members to work in the business. No matter what, you need to make sure that you are fully jumping into this with your eyes wide open, not just you, but also your family members. Here's why. There's a lot of family businesses that have done really well. They've been in business for 30, 40, 50, 75 years, but they come at a cost. Sometimes they're family businesses that were started by one person and then the kid took over and then the grandkid took over. There are some generational things where the original person starting the business, it's really difficult for them to let go of that business as they hand it down through the generations. But where a lot of that rub comes in, because we're, this is a podcast about starting a business, something that you need to know from the very beginning of doing this is there's two hats that you wear, right? You have the employee hat and you have the business owner hat. But when you have family, there's a whole nother hat that comes in. And that is of that relative, of that brother, of that mother, of that sister, of that father, of that daughter, whatever role you have with those family members. And a lot of times when family is working for you, they can't switch that off. They don't understand that when you're talking to them as their boss, as the owner of the business, they tend to take it more personal. So if you're holding them accountable, they tend to get a little bit more snippy or they think they can get away with it. They can start coming in late to work. They can start skimping here and there and they're going to get away with it. And by the way, if you have other employees, they're going to see it, they're going to notice it, and they're going to think, oh, I see how it is. It's family members that get special treatment. It's really critical that if you plan to open up a small business and it's going to have family members in, that you guys sit down and discuss the do's and the don'ts, the expectations, and what will or will not be tolerated. Because if you don't have this dialogue up front and then you hold yourselves to it as you keep going, it's going to cause your business to implode. I have coached different types of businesses where each family member said, okay, I'm going to take care of this. You're going to take care of this and you're going to take care of this. Sounds good. Sounds fine. But then what happens is one of those legs start breaking down. So what happens is, let's just say one person says they're going to do the marketing. Well, all of a sudden you're not getting the sales. They're not out there trying to get new business. And the other members of the family are like getting ticked off going, hey, business is slow. You're not going out there. You're not recruiting like you promised you were going to do. Oh, you don't understand. I am out there. I am doing this and that. How are you going to handle that? You know, having a family business has a weird dynamic to it. And you've got to make sure that you guys have walked through all the different scenarios and how you plan to handle that when it happens. But at the same time is you also can create a family goal, a family mission, and you're going to work really well together on some levels to to build that business. So there definitely are pros and cons to it when you're doing it. But I will tell you that if you start talking to people that have hired family members, they will tell you that they are some of their more difficult situations to navigate because of that. I remember when I hired my nephew and I really struggled when all of a sudden he started getting mouthy about some stuff because he was mad at something or another, but he forgot that Uh, at that moment, he was talking to his boss, not to his aunt. And at home, yeah, I'd put my arms around him and hug him and do everything else. But at work, you're not going to make a fool out of yourself in front of my customers and in front of the other employees. So he didn't quite get the response that he wanted to get, uh, no matter what we were doing. And it ended up causing where he ended up having to leave the company. But at the same time, I had to do damage control backwards with people who thought that he was able to get away with something that there was no way I would have let anyone else get away with. Also, make sure that you are really honest with yourself about what your family members can and cannot do. I've hired family members that I knew just did not have the same customer service level that I do. I'm a customer service fanatic. And while they weren't bad at customer service, they didn't have that same passion and fire in their belly that I do. So 
they were doing good customer service, but they weren't pushing themselves nor my team to the next level on customer service that would happen if I was there. And that was very frustrating to me. So it was one of those things where it created some unnecessary tension even though they were fine, it just was, I wanted more out of them. I wanted them to to want more out of the family business than what they were giving to it. They were thinking like an employee at that moment and not as a co-owner of this business or somebody that would be benefiting from the success of this business, if that makes sense. So, because I owned it completely, but they benefited from the success from it. So you would think that there would be a bigger hunger in their belly for it to be successful, and there wasn't. Um, like I said, they were good employees and that's how they thought like an employee. And you have to ask yourself when you are doing a family business, can you be realistic about what these people are going to be able to do for you and not do for you? You know, no one's going to have that passion, that fire in their belly like you are. And are you going to be okay with that? And what should that look like when they're working for you? Are they going to be clock punchers where they just come in, they do their job and they go home and you're perfectly okay with that. But then you have to be okay with that. You can't be mad at them for doing exactly what it is that you hired them to do. And you're not going to change somebody who naturally isn't that way. If let's just say you want to go into business with your brother and your brother comes to you with saying, oh yeah, I'm going to totally do that. But you've never witnessed your brother fall passionately in love with anything and fight for anything, nor be as driven as you are. What makes you think your brother's going to be that way coming up? There's a lot of people that get excited about what could be versus doing the actual work that's behind it. Um, I've experienced that as well, where I've gone into a project with somebody where they were all fired up, ready to go. And the minute the keys unlocked and the minute it was started, it was like you could feel them melting away from the process uh, because it just wasn't what they thought it was going to be. So when you're dealing with your family, you want to make sure that you're looking at that with them and that you're being honest with yourself about what their capabilities are and that you guys have that good dialogue and are open with each other as to what the roles are going to be, what they can expect, and then what happens when somebody doesn't live up to that, what should happen. The more you can put that on the table, the better off you're going to be. Now, one thing I want to make sure that you do, please make sure that if you decide to start a business with your family, still get it in writing. Because what if you build something over the course of a year and one of the family members want out? Are they expecting half? Are they expecting all of it? Uh, What are they expecting? Make sure you put everything in writing. I know it sounds cold, but keep in mind, there's hats you're wearing. There's the business owner hat you, and then there's the father, son, mother, daughter, whatever you're going to be. You've got to make sure that you don't let the two of them blend together when it comes to this business. It is an entity all on its own. And it's important that you protect the entity and what's going on. Are you going to buy them out? Or are you not going to buy them out? You know what? Do you automatically get it? Even worse, what happens if, heaven forbid, you start a business with your sibling and one of you gets into a car accident and is gone? Who gets the other half of that business? Does it go to their spouse? Does it go to their kids? These might be people that you have no desire whatsoever to work with them and you need to have that in writing. Do you automatically get it? Does the surviving family member get it or does it buy them out or do you buy them out and give that money to the spouse and to the to the to their kids or whatever the case may be? It's no different than a regular partnership that you would go in with somebody else, but it's really important that all of that stuff is talked through so this way you can make sure that you're prepared for it. So, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this one up. Just keep in mind that a family business can be wonderful and there's family businesses that have been built that can last for a very long time with clear rules and expectations of everybody in it. But for every successful business, there are 10 others that blew up, got too close to the sun, fell apart. It just did not end well. And you want to make sure that for your family business that you guys really truly understand the roles of each person in it and that you are going to be respectful of those rules and roles that people put in place and that it doesn't hurt Thanksgiving dinner when you guys are sitting around the table and everybody's being snipey with each other because of something that's going on in the business. You really have to say that, hey, we're going to check the business at the door when we have these family get togethers. We're not going to do that. So look at all of those scenarios and make sure you and those family members have that dialogue. So this way you guys are on the same page with how it's going to go. So a lot to talk about. 
with that family before you get it going. Uh, just make sure you look at all the pros and cons, the good, the bad, the ugly, and have that dialogue and are prepared for the worst case scenario. Because there's gonna, I'm, it's not a matter of if, it's, it's just a matter of when. Someone's going to tick the other one off. Someone's going to have to be fired. Somebody's going to have to be let go. Uh, or you guys are going to have to get back on the same page when you've fallen off the same page. Are people going to forget whose roles is what? Uh, and by the way, before I forget, same thing with compensation. Uh, are you guys going to have 50-50? There's a difference between employee money that you make and owner's draw. You might share 50-50 in the owner's draw piece, but if one person has a bigger role, make sure you carve out a different employee wage for that other person. So it's very possible that you guys might start the business together, but one of you might make more money as an employee in the business because of what you do, but yet your owner's draw piece is identical in the business. Uh, so make sure you have that kind of conversation as well. I almost forgot. Sorry about that. Uh, so when it comes to compensation, make sure you don't just go into it saying, oh, we're going to 50-50 it or one third, one third, one third, because you're going to have employee roles that you do and you're going to have profitability roles that you have. So you all share in that profitability piece, but make sure that you have clear rules around what you're going to pay yourselves as employees in the business, because you're probably not doing identical roles that need to be compensated the same way. So make sure you don't forget that as well. All right, with that, I'm going to go ahead and wrap that up. And I will talk to you on the next episode. Bye for now.